Hello and welcome to the video. Have you seen those thrust stands that people use to measure the power output of a motor or maybe the efficiency and things like that? Well, today I've got something special and that is I'm going to show you how to build your own. So this tutorial will cover the construction and um, what this is going to be used for in, in my environment. Um, it's very cheap very easily obtainable components so yeah let's get to it so let's take a look at the type of tooling we need for this sort of project um, we're going to need to drill some holes so we're going to use a drill and we'll also need to measure so I really like to use these calipers here so you can measure diameters you can measure distance so I find them very useful if you haven't got anything like that then a simple ruler would suffice We'll also need to be cutting, we'll be cutting steel, we'll be cutting wood, use hacksaw, and we also need to tighten nuts and bolts. So you can use an adjustable wrench, or I happen to have these eight millimeter ratchet drivers, which I use for taking off props. So I've got two of those, so I'll be using those. And a pencil for marking. I think that's pretty much it from a tooling perspective. Moving on now to the types of materials we're going to use today. So we have the motor here with the propeller. We need to somehow fasten that onto a mechanism. So we're going to use a metal plate like this. And then moving on down, we've got some pieces of wood that we're going to mount the metal plate on. We've got different types of L brackets here, which you'll, you'll see in a moment how they form part of the structure. And we've got nuts and bolts here. These are um, five millimeter nuts and bolts with a eight millimeter um, uh, heads on them and nuts on them. So they can be easily used with these spanners. We've also got some U clamps as well, which you'll see in a moment what they're for. Hello, this is Tony from the future here. I'm just gonna stop the video here just to point out, you may have noticed I'm using little plastic lids to keep all the nuts and bolts and things separated. So this is a good idea if you want to keep things organized and also to stop things from maybe falling off the bench or, or getting lost. So very good, especially when you've got very small components too. Anyway, let's continue with the video. So that's pretty much it from the materials. Oh yes, of course, the base. <laughs> so we've got the base which is gonna mount everything on. So that's it from materials. And so next up is part of the construction. So before we look at the construction of this thrust stand, it's a good idea to just show you the actual concept, what we're trying to achieve here. So we have this kitchen scale here and we have the motor. Now the motor spinning in this direction will cause the motor to move in this direction as you'd expect on a normal quad. So what we need to do is to translate this movement into a downward motion onto the kitchen scale. So what I came up with is this arrangement here, this split piece of wood. And if we join it at 90 degrees, and this little foot here would sit on top of the scale like so, so that when the motor is moved in this direction, it will push down on the scale. So we need to consider then how this is going to be clamped together at this point here and this pivot point. All right, this pivot point and how this pivot point is going to fit on the base. So that's going to be the next stage of the video. During this construction phase, I'll just be showing you some of the key build points, but I don't worry, I won't be boring you with uh, me tightening up nuts and bolts and stuff. So first of all, then I'm going to attach this motor to this plate. This is just a quite a thick, strong plate I had lying around. It had lots of holes in it, but I wasn't going to use those holes. I just drilled a couple of holes to, to mount the motor. So I'll just mount that on and then we can move on to the next piece. Here's the motor now securely fastened to the top of the bracket. And now we'll move on to these wooden components here, which form the sort of L shaped arm. So we just basically cut the wood here at 45 degrees so that'll fit nicely. Now you could consider gluing this but I really think that with all the force in this direction it's going to snap, it's not going to have enough 
strength there. And that's where these L-shaped brackets come into play. So they're going to fit like this. You can see that. So there'll be one on each side. I've already pre-drilled them, ready to go. So I'm just going to put in the nuts and bolts and we move on to the, the next stage. Here is the assembled arm. As you can see, I've used I've used these five millimeter lock nuts, just like what we use to hold our propellers down. So these are just five millimeter bolts, and that is extremely, extremely secure. So that's not going to budge. We've got a good ninety degree angle there. Right. So next part is this motor with the bracket. We need to find a way of fastening it to the top like that, and that's where these u-shaped clamps come in so the u, the u part fits on the wood like uh, let's see if you can see like like that and then the bracket with the motor on will be clamped like that i'm going to use two of these u-shaped clamps so that's what i'll do next and i'll come back now that the motor is attached to the arm, you can see that we're almost complete um, with this particular project. Now, we just need to um, consider how we're going to mount this on the wood. And again, L brackets are very useful. So we're going to have something like, let's turn that around. We're going to have something like, like this. Okay, then when this sort of straddles across like that. And it's at a certain height, so I've chosen the brackets to be a certain height of brackets so that it fits kind of snugly um, and at the right level to the uh, to the scale here. So these are off-the-shelf um, brackets here. I didn't drill those at all. So yeah, we'll just get onto that and then come on back to the video. There we are. We've got the L brackets attached to the arm and you might notice that there's a couple of washers one here and one here just to keep the metal separated so we've got a little bit of movement here I had to um, come to an arrangement really a bit of a balance between having it too tight so this didn't move and, and too loose so uh, this is kind of like the, the desired kind of um, stickiness shall we say so now we're going to mount it onto the base. Here we are. It's the construction pretty much finished. Everything's pretty secure. All the nuts and bolts are as tight as they need to be and that seems to be working really well. So if we put the scales in place and we push on the top here, where we get a reading. So at the moment I'm <laughs> exerting 190 grams worth of force on, on the top here. So you can see that's working pretty well. Um, what I'll be doing next is just put some rubber feet on the bottom of here and some stickers, and then we can move on to the next part. I've chosen the stickers that I'm going to use, but before we put them on, it's very important to degrease the surface. So I use this product here, which is a uh, isopropanol alcohol which is available in different forms this one's a spray form so I'm just going to spray this on clean it put the stickers on and then we're just about finished here we are here's the finished stand I think it's looking quite good and with some rubber feet on there just to keep it steady stop it from slipping around so uh, one thing I will need to do before we start using it is just to put some kind of insulation tape maybe across this plate because we might have some exposed wires that might touch short out on the metal. So I'll do that off camera. Okay, so that's almost it. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, kind of why I built this and um, start to p power it up and, and run some tests through it. Here we have our completed thrust stand on the bench. And we're using a KISS ESC with the new firmware on board. And I've, I've swapped out the motor for a hype train motor here. Now for power, I've just got this connector here, electrical connector with an XT60 uh, powering the ESC. And a ground wire going out to this Betaflight flight controller here. 
and pin one of sorry output one of the flight controller is going to the signal input of the ESC so we're going to be using the flight controller to uh, control the motor basically and the power for the flight controller is coming from the USB which is on the lap which is going to be on the laptop over here just turn around just over there okay and for measuring the current into the ESC and motor I'm going to use this current clamp which is going to be clamped round the cable like that so that will measure the current being drawn and the power I'm going to use is this fully charged graphene battery here now before we power up I'm just going to do a continuity test so you can see we've got continuity there I'm going to connect up to the input to the motor here just to see if we've got everything wired up and there's no shorts so there we are there's no shorts because I'd hate to plug the battery in and then everything goes bang okay let's power this guy up there we are. It's a good sound from the ESC and connect the current clamp there we are okay and turn on the scales okay so that's free to move but of course we don't have any propeller at the moment we're just going to do a test without the propeller just to see if the motor spins moving over to the beta flight configurator we go to the motors tab and click this over to make sure yeah we've got no propellers and if I hover over this slider here and use the up and down cursor keys I should be able to make the motor spin let's take a look yep that's spinning very freely sounds good and it's running quite slow because the D-Shock protocol does run at a slower pace than other protocols let's give it a little bit more Yes, looking good. Okay, so that was a very quick test without a propeller and we did see a little bit of increase in current, which is what we'd expect. Now let's do the same kind of thing with the propeller on the motor. So let's turn on scale. That's reading zero. Let's turn on the motor. Oops. So that's free to move, which is good. And um, I'll just zero this. There we are. And I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use some eye protection just in case. Let's connect the USB cable. And over on the Betaflight configurator, yes, we understand the risks. That's okay. We know what we're doing. And again, if I hover over here and increase there we go we have movement now let's take a look at the reading on the scale so we've got about two grams or so of uh, thrust coming off at the moment and if we increase it quite a lot more So we've got about 73 grams. Let's keep going a bit more. Hundred and eighty-five with about two and a half amps. Well, there we are, test complete. Looks great. All right, we're nearly at the end of this video. But before we go, I just wanted to explain a little bit about why I built this. So really, it was a bit of fun. Um, it's, it's nice to have the ability to say, 
put a motor on a stand like this without the propeller and just test say an ESC and just make sure that the ESC is working because more often than not you haven't got an arm on a quad lying around that you can attach a motor to so you don't want the motor spinning across the desk so you need something to clamp it to so in that regard it's quite nice to have that as a stand. Um, in terms of sort of scientific calculations using current meters and the thrust on measurement on this display here it's quite useful it's not very accurate but it'd be quite good to have a comparison between different types of propellers maybe or if you've flashed a new version of the firmware on an ESE you could see the improvements that it's made for a particular um, speed range or maybe checking the efficiency or or current ratings things like that so it's quite good as a comparison but but yeah mainly it was for a, a bit of fun to show you that you can build something uh, quite cheaply without spending hundreds of dollars. So if you like this tutorial please give me a like or if you have any questions or comments about what you've seen today then put something in the comment box that'd be great and uh, yeah if you want to see more of these things then please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.